Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to episode 3 of my exclusive look at Thrones of Britannia as Northumbria. In the last episode, we held the Mercian Bastards at Chester and kept them at bay upon our walls. Our faction leader slayed them down as they came and not a single one made their way into the capture point. It was a great battle and we slaughtered, I think, about 6,000 Mercians. We have pushed them back heavily now and all they can muster is a couple units here and there we also slayed their king which was great news for us we actually are like i think five or six turns on from the last episode again as i said this is just a highlight thing being capped at only 10 minutes per episode means i have to cut some stuff out and make it as interesting as possible however during that battle the the betrayers i guess of my kin the, the enemies of the state the nobility rebelled against me seeing that i was occupied in chester and took land for themselves I have recently since then taken back a few of the pieces of land, sending back my heir along with my other loyal generals to reclaim and kill their armies. I have slaughtered most of the betrayers, however a few of them still remain and civil war is still ripping my country apart, making it very hard for me to push the, the advantage against Mercia. They picked the perfect time to rebel against me and it is going to be difficult to bring them down. However, our armies are building up now and we are pushing on. However, Wessex have now arrived and are ready to assault me here, so I need to try and keep the Wessex armies away from me whilst I am pushing elsewhere and keeping them at bay with my forces. On top of that, to pile it on, the Irish declared war on me and they are coming over, seeing again that I am being surrounded. I really should have maybe have made friends with them earlier on, seeing that they are big, having a declaration of friendship out there to build relations that definitely has come back to bite me in the arse for sure. Okay guys, so we've managed to corner the Irish army which was roaming around our lands, taking a lot of our territory. So the fact we managed to corner it, hopefully we can smash it right now and claim victory. If we can defeat this army, we will then be able to push back the Irish, move our general back towards the front lines and settle things. There are a lot of Wessex armies moving in from the right side of the map. However, as long as I can kill this and protect my back, then I can focus elsewhere and push down south, which is ideally what I'm going to be planning on doing. Okay, the Irish are getting ready to move close to us. On our army, we do have a lot of spearmen. However, they are pretty heavily armored spearmen. We also have a lot of elite swordsmen as well. And I've also got my general right here. He's ready to push up as well when they do get a little bit closer with our archer fire going overhead. Now, the Irish do have a lot of heavy swordsmen on top of that. But again, we will be able to beat them back, I am sure, with our superior skill. We also attacked in nighttime because it does look really, really cool as they do try and push us back. So let's retreat our archer line really quickly, get them back and prepare our front line with a nice little shield wall as well. Okay, so we are winning heavily on this left flank, smashing in their left flank with my elite soldiers. You can see that it's causing a mass rout. However, their general is ferociously fighting on the front lines. I mean, the battle lines have just been clashing for about five minutes now. No one's showing any breakage. But I think my general is just so good. You know, having that level 10 command, having all of these abilities, is just allowing him to really come in. And now we'll try and put the pressure on the rest of his soldiers. He did also manage to get, you know, some good charges off of me, but we need to break the Irish here. We need to kill their general. That's why I have associated my, uh, my Huskulls over here to hopefully try and break their armor. Along with my general coming around the back, there should be no escape for this general, and he should be somewhat okay to kill. Then after this army, we'll bring him back down south, and hopefully our general can push on and put some more pressure on the Mercians unless you know and as long as the civil war is dealt with which obviously it might not be there might still be more people looking to rise up against us hopefully though that won't be the case the last of their soldiers cower in fear only 200 of them left remaining we killed over almost 1800 of their men our general getting 168 of them our sword infantry is just so good and much like it should be you know they are true vikings so we can use that to our advantage i think we're gonna get the ransom money honestly because we do need some cash we're, we're pretty broke and hopefully by defeating this army obviously chasing it down as well we'll continue to be able to push them down um, especially yeah, killing this will be great 
And that'll push the Irish back, which is nice, because it means that we can just focus southwards and not have a, a random 20 stack roaming around. I mean, this is what the quality of our general, right? We also need to make sure we reclaim back this next turn as well, because this does offer us a lot of food. Okay, guys, so things are not looking good, honestly. That civil war absolutely destroyed us, and I don't really know where it came from, because I swear everyone was on our side. I think it was because we gained one of our vassals that came under us down here, and that just put, gave us a bunch more lords who I didn't like or didn't like me and had just absolutely turned on me. We will obviously continue fighting and but with fighting the Irish and also fighting Wessex down in the south it's not looking good. So I honestly think I could bring this back but we only have 10 minutes in these episodes so it's not really a lot I can do. So we are bringing back our, our king's army. The king's army is yet to be defeated. Wessex are busy down here in the south um, and if we can push elsewhere then we will but I will go ahead and jump into this siege battle. This is our air so we will want to fight and I also want to show off the city as well because this isn't Chester this is Manchester so we can see what actually Manchester looks like you can see now it's you know very very different I think it is also still stone but you know nonetheless we'll jump into it so that's you know we've got a good amount of battles at least in these let's plays so you guys can see and a few good sieges as well so as you guys can see, this is not quite like Chester. The, the Romans were not here, at least, for the, the, uh, the stone fortification. So this is going to be very, very different. But again, still very interesting. It is a hill fort, after all. The enemy have to approach up quite a long hill. Okay, so the first Mercy and Infantry have made their way to the walls. We'll try our best to surround them and take them out. They've sent up their very, very elite soldiers first, but we need to make sure we kill these guys as quickly as possible. I'm actually going to send in more of my infantry here just to ensure that we take these guys out. And here they come. They will hopefully just demolish this unit of spearmen in the side of their armor, kind of away from their shields. And this year, you can just see the dead laying there. So many of them just pinned down. The gates are now destroyed, and I imagine we'll be seeing the large portion of the enemy forces coming our way very, very soon. Our general has been slain at the gate. It looks like all hope is lost and the forces of Wessex will overwhelm my position in full force. The walls have been taken by the brave men of Wessex and they will be pushing on. All hope is lost. Decisive defeat. There was just too much for our eight men defending this castle, which was just unfortunate we didn't have more troops to supplement him however our general our king could not be here to save his son he had to be northwards to put down the rebellions and also the civil war arising however he will get vengeance don't you guys worry we can see though that my general put up a valiant fight and he will definitely be met at the gates of Valhalla taking down almost 200 men himself with only half his bodyguards to begin the battle with I am proud of him and his legend will go down however Manchester does fall and we're definitely gonna do that <laughs> the Irish no longer at war with us we might have a chance to push southwards and continue to take them out okay guys I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here it was a wonderful journey fighting back Mercia and Wessex and I definitely feel like if we could have carried on playing we would have easily been able to sort this out and start retaliating as our king's army was never defeated in battle not even close so I think that he could easily have dispatched a whole number if not to you know tens of thousands of enemy soldiers thank you guys so much for watching this and hopefully this gave you a good glimpse of Thrones of Britannia make sure to drop a like and a comment down below also be sure to go ahead and tell me what you thought of the game in the comments as well as well as what faction you think I should play as in the full release of the game. I am definitely enjoying it my overall opinion on Thrones of Britannia that it is probably one of the best design games they have done in a long long time. There are so many small features which just make so much sense kind of a lot of stuff taken from Age of Charlemagne and just brought to the whole next level which I think is amazing such as you know having custom cities. I love the town feature being able to take farms and you know villages and mines and really focusing on that i love the way that you can arrange marriages to help consolidate bonds i feel like diplomacy seems to be a lot more fluent in it and people you know aren't just willing to say no to everything you send at them it's creating a declaration of friendship will build trust between your factions
faction and then they'll be more, much more likely to create military allies. I also love the way that units are built. I think it's a nice change to but how Total War has been played and hopefully something they'll take forward as I think it is a great thing just with a lot more expansion on that, you know, making it so that you maybe can't recruit your entire roster at the beginning of the game. But I like the idea of having that global pool and being able to muster men and it takes a while because that also affects the AI and means that they can't just spam hundreds of armies. If you defeat their armies in a big battle where they have three or four of their stacks there, that's going to hurt their empire and then are just going to be able to you know, amass all of these armies straight away. So as I said, make sure to leave a like and a comment. I will see you guys in the next one and fish out.